All right, so we are delving straight into the details of our big subjects we have for you this morning. And it has to do with the fact that following the demise of Madame Ekiadonko, something has to change, especially on the notice of poll and the ballot paper that the EC is expected to print. You will know that she is the founder of the Ghana Freedom Party. A, a meeting is expected to be, uh, to be held to decide on whether or not the next line of action for the Electoral Commission. Madam Ikredonko died last night, sparking concerns about the potential impact on the polls. And in the next few minutes, we'll be trying to make sense of what exactly is the next major move by her party and, by extension, the Electoral Commission of the Republic on the way forward. Joseph Akabla is my colleague who will be helping me or helping us understand what's happening behind the decisions of the EC and the Ghana Freedom Party. He's with me here in studio. Let's delve right into the conversation now. Joseph, thank you for joining us. Um, maybe before we get into the specifics, where were you? How did you hear of the demise of the passing of Amada Mekiadonko? I mean, it's one of those days, very sad news that came in. Um, I actually slept quite early last night, but when I woke up, there were a number of messages that had come in yeah. uh, suggesting that she had unfortunately died. And so first, our condolences to the family. Then, as news people, what we tried to do was to try to get a necessary confirmation. It took a yeah. bit of time, but eventually, uh, that confirmation came through, and we've now been trying to understand what happens beyond this happening. Very yeah. tough time for yeah. the family. We understand they are particularly based in the Ashanti region, yeah. and so some series of family meetings are taking place as they intend to inform uh, this nation for that matter and also the electoral commission uh, of this particular unfortunate incident that has taken place right all right so now let's go into the details and uh, profile who madam ekia donko is especially for those who may not know her well in this case we might say was because she's uh, she's passed on to glory but let's go to her background how did she get into politics i mean she's uh, known as a cocoa farmer a cocoa farmer who in 2012 uh, just declared her interest in wanting to contest the national elections. And uh, when we ran through the details, you realized that she was unsuccessful twice, but eventually she made it in 2020. So many people know her as the founder and leader, flag bearer and presidential candidate of the Ghana Freedom Party. In terms of this upcoming election, on the ballot that was done, she was number three, a very important position that she got over there. Uh, she had tried to contest 2012 polls as an independent candidate, but was disqualified by the Electoral Commission. Uh, she failed to contest the 2016 polls as well. Then she contested in 2020, where she placed fifth out of 12 candidates. She managed to get 5,330, uh, that is 0.04% mm. of the value. And, and, and then it's also interesting to know that in 2012, which was her first attempt, it was, many described it as comical, but she had a different perspective to Ghana's politics and thought that she had something to offer, especially for women, rural farmers, and people who are almost always underrepresented. So she took the step. She was disqualified by the Electoral Commission. That didn't deter her. Yeah. She came back again in 2016. And in that um, year, she was also uh, disqualified yeah. by the Electoral Commission, but decided to throw her weight behind John Dramani yeah. Mahama. In recent times, she's had a fracas with the NDC, yeah. uh, specifically attacking John Mahama. People didn't know that she had supported him in time past, time but it's past, interesting yeah. to uh, know that. And even during the discussions at IPAC, where he, she actually took on the NDC quite strongly, you recall that she had also basically bagged the Electoral Commission. Now, this history puts it into context as well, because you recall 2012, she couldn't contest. In yeah. 2016 was when Charlotte Osei had undertaken that disqualification that affected a number of people, including yeah. the Progressive People's yeah. Party, yeah. having to go to court for the court to allow them in. So it was a very difficult year for her. Mm. And then she managed to make it in 2020. So it came as no surprise that she's been of praise for the Electoral Commission particularly. Yes. And yes. May, we, we all saw those videos of her interaction and talking about how good Jemensa is and how yeah. she believes that she's a competent person to manage the affairs of the Electoral Commission. So yeah. that is by way of how she managed to get onto the scene. Now, this is where the entire turn issue uh, rests now, because mm -hmm. the question now, many people are asking that, what happens now that she's been disqualified? And we have to put it in context. Right here in Ghana, there was a situation, an assemblyman election, where the assemblyman contestant died just before the election. Now, the process were not done to have the person taken off the road, and they voted. Mm. And quite strangely, they voted massively for the dead person, mm. and he won the election. And so it created a bit of a problem. And so those are some of the challenges that our laws seek to address. And so... First, from the 1992 Constitution, the governing law of Ghana, it says in Article 54 of the 1992 Constitution that where are the close of nominations 
but before the election, one of the candidates dies, a further period of 10 days shall be allowed for nominations, and where the death occurs at any time within 25 days before the election, the election in that constituency or unit shall be postponed for 21 days. And mm. so the first context we need to understand is the fact that one, nominations have closed. Yes. So that is where we are at this stage. And we have one of the candidates dying. And so for, per the constitution, it says that a further period of 10 days shall be allowed for nominations. And so we know that nominations have also closed. Closed, yes. But the EC's regulations give some further sense or idea of what ought to happen in such a scenario. So we go mm. a step further and look at regulation 13, sub-regulation 4 of CI 127, which is the public regulations law that governs elections and all other public elections. It says contested election and death of a candidate. Where are the close of nominations? But before the election, uh, one of the candidates dies, a further period of 10 days shall be allowed for nominations. And so this is very similar to what is here in the constitution. Right. Basically, a reproduction of what the constitutional architecture provides. There's another death that is also provided, but there are those who are, the legal experts are already making the point that, well, they want to differentiate that one from this particular situation because in that particular instance, it says, where an election is to be held and a candidate dies on the eve of the election mm -hmm. and proof of the death of the candidate is given to the return officer before the commencement of the poll, the return officer shall put on hold proceedings in relation to the election and inform the commission. So the first point they make is that this ought to deal with the eve of the election. Mm -hmm. And we are nowhere close to the eve of the election, which is the point some are already making. But if you go a step further on that provision, it says the commission shall on receipt of the information under sub-regulation 1, agend the poll and allow a period of 10 days for the political party to which the candidate belong to nominate a new candidate, candidate. as well. Right. Now, the problem with this particular provision, and if you go a step further, is the fact that it, does, it bars independent candidates from making such changes. Right. And so there are those who may hold the view that, well, if you go back to the constitutional provision, there's no such limit. And also because we are not at the eve of the election, and rather we are just at the stage where nominations have closed, but before the election taking place, one of the candidates has died. And it means that what should happen ordinarily is that a further period of 10 days should be allowed for the nominations. Right. Now, it raises the legal issue of when the 10 days is open, who are they allowing in? Are they going to allow everyone in? Because we know that... There are some individuals like Bernard Mona who have been disqualified, mm -hmm. who had made a point that if they had been given the opportunity to make changes, they would, would have, have been, been able to paper. be on the ballot paper. Then there are also those who make the point that, well, the 10 days that they open should be limited to that political party mm -hmm. and not open to any other person. So if the party wants to replace the candidate, they would have to decide that leg. The other question that is again throws up is that, well, if the party decides they're not going to replace the candidate, they're going to leave it on the ballot, yeah. what does the EC do? Mm -hmm. Have they printed a ballot paper? Are they printing new ones? Are they keeping it on the ballot paper? Because it also has implications. Yeah. And we've, we've demonstrated that in relation to... And it's also interesting elections. that the Electoral Commission is bound by all these regulations themselves. Secondly, until a formal notification is given them by either the party or, in this case, it can't be the family, it should be the party, to the Electoral Commission that this uh, candidate has passed, they cannot take action. Then it raises the question, what then happens to the arrangement on the ballot paper, which has already uh, been printed or has started, you know, a printing has started, and she is number three on the ballot. Yeah. Does the EC blank out number three or take out number three and shift the other candidates to fill that slot? That leaves a number of questions for the EC to answer. In fact, a very tough time for the commission, and they would have to first, we've checked with our sources then, we are understanding they are approaching it in two ways. The first is that they are waiting for the notification to come from either the party or the family to inform them of that incident, mm. then they would have to now meet and decide as a commission their next step. And the point you made about the balloting is very important because if you remember, during the balloting that took place by the Electoral Commission, they allowed the political parties to ballot first Certainly. before the independent candidates. And so some of the political parties are not necessarily satisfied with their slots. I know some who may even want to even be in a matter. Yes. But here's a situation where they are not going to get a chance to be there, but the person who's going to be in a matter is not there on the ballot. And mm. so the question remains that, well, if you are going to blank it out, why not do it all over again? Yes. And well, the number one want to relinquish <laughs> that because, mind you, they've already printed campaign materials and everything. With the numbers on it. It's a very, it's a very worrying situation yeah, for the yeah, parties. Yeah. I mean, they've gone around, some have composed songs, yeah. uh, some are saying uh, they are not going to allow someone to break the eight, so they are number eight. Someone yeah. says, I'm going to be number one, so I'm number one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They are all yeah. others who have ascribed various <laughs> meanings to it. So yeah. it has implications generally for how everything plays out. But what's important in all of this is the fact that the constitution provides a guide, and 54 is the instructive one. It says, where are the close of nominations, but before the election, 
one of the candidates dies, a further period of 10 days shall be allowed for nominations. Mm. And where death occurs at any time within 25 days, so we are not even at the 25 days limit yet. Okay. So we are still within that period. So in the next coming days, what we expect is that the commission ought to meet and take a decision on what they are going to do going forward. And with the concerns you've raised yourself, mm. it will be very important that they engage the political parties in order for them to reach some form of understanding as well. Yeah, and the 10 days mentioned here in the constitution is specific to the date the EC is notified. So the 10 days starts counting from when the EC yeah. is notified. So all these days that they are yet to be given formal information about the demise of Ekwe Adonko, nothing, uh, we, we can't ca start counting yeah. until, 10, uh, until the EC is formally given information that she's passed on. Then the 10 days starts from there. And it says it opens nomination or allows nominations. Does that, could also, I mean, another question being asked is, does it, what can the party do in this instance? Maybe later we can look at the provisions of the party. Now, it raises the question of the political parties we have in the country, their structures that they run by. So, indirectly, those, some people are asking, does that mean that the running mate that Madam Yuki Adonko had chosen, uh, popularly known as um, Roman, Roman Fada, Fada yeah. does he automatically come and replace her on the ballot? Will the party allow that? Does the party even have the structures in place to come to that agreement yeah. that go ahead and replace her? I mean, I mean, for all of these questions, since 2012, 2016, 2020, since she read her head, she has basically been the face of the party. I mean, it will be difficult. I'm sure if you even do a simple Google search, you are looking for who the chairperson of the party is. I, I don't you think you'll find yes. any of that. She has basically been the one running this particular party. And it's a political party mm. with very interesting ideals. I mean, it's very difficult to uh, place them uh, in any of the spectrums that we normally have them to be in, whether they are center-left or center-right. Yeah. But generally, very pro-African policies, yeah. uh, talking about scrapping taxes, scrapping import duties, free ports. Uh, yeah, free ports and allowing things to come in like that. And I mean, a candidate of her nature, I mean, she was one who... It's not lettered. I mean, she. Yes, she, yes. So yes, it's, yes. it's someone who, more or less, many people even tended to look at and say that why is she even contesting the first place? Yeah. Particularly because of some of the views she has pressed on various national issues. issues. And I go back to the IPAC discussion again because she some had taken a view that she had quite unfairly taken on the opposition in DC, for instance. And so that again comes with its own challenges. Mm. But what I see uh, happening, and that's why it comes back to the communication that will take place. That will be very important. Because the EC would await the notification and also want to get a sense of which direction the party is leaning towards. Right. Because when you look at the first part of the regulation, this one doesn't place any restriction anywhere. It is the second part which some are already saying that this one should be limited to the eve of the election. Mm -hmm. Because in this particular instance, there's a restriction when you go on subsequently on independent candidates. Right. But for political parties, the parties are allowed to replace them. Mm. So if we are going to interpret the 50 provision Four. to mean that we're actually going to allow the party affected to just replace their candidate. And the question that remains is that, is Ghana Freedom Party intending to replace Madame Mekou Adonko as the flag bearer or running or presidential candidate? We wait to the see. party may not be interested in yeah. doing that. And so that could also come with this one. And that's challenge. the challenge with having one one man parties or one person parties. And, and probably another time, we'll probably look at the requirements of setting up a political party and whether or not the EC has been lazy in implementing its own laws about what you need as a group or as an individual if you want to form a political party. They are supposed to have offices in at least all uh, the constituencies. Yeah, yeah. We can say on authority that the Ghana Freedom Party does not even have, even in the Greater Accra region alone, they don't have up to five offices. So all of these things are part of the current challenge we are in now and we'll see we probably will have to wait and hear from the party themselves and then also how that ties into the election. In fact it was one of the reasons actions. why she didn't make the ballot uh, between tw in 2016 particularly. It was yeah. one of the main rules that uh, the Charlotte Osei led electoral commission tried to implement mm. and then it affected a number of the political parties saying that well the law is that you're supposed to have presence across the constituencies right and so they had wanted that to take place as well. Again under the constitution political parties are generally required to have democratic structures in place. So in terms of how they elect mm. the officials and all of those things must be reflective of the national system that we're running. So that again brings to bear the political party structure and how effective it is. But look, trust me, in terms of the placing faith, I'm sure many people will be surprised when they, yeah. they saw that she had placed faith in 2020. the 2020 elections. I mean, ahead all of right. a host of other candidates, some whom many consider to be the main individuals who should be leading uh, the political party. Right, so if you're just joining us, this is Election 360. We've just been
profiling Madam Ekia Donko, one of the presidential candidates uh, seeking to lead the country in 2024. She passed away in the early hours of this morning and the news is that the political party has 10 days or has a few days to write to the Electoral Commission and after the EC is formally notified, they have 10 days to decide or not whether to ask the party to replace the candidate or the EC uh, probably might have to also think about what happens next. Does that shift all the parties up if they blank out the number? A lot of questions, uh, but very few answers. Ours is to just help you understand what the law says and again, some of these things, 2024 has thrown up a lot of interesting issues because these are uncharted territories. It's not happened clearly before. And this is the first time something like this is happening. So it's helping us consolidate our democracy. So maybe later, uh, we'll try and uh, bring, let's bring you. So the last known video of Madame Ekiadonko was at the IPAC meeting, a short snippet of that. Then maybe we'll delve into some other subjects we have for you on Election 360. <laughs> Me go soon or two busy and train your train your me no train your train your me no never do your mahaba. So the train fast no one man is catching ya na. Let me know no. Me no. I am the natural case. And you can see a family. Now me no need to na. And I said you should go na. Me my mother said you should go to you see me pay for. Me my mother said me never do your chain. And I want to never do your I just go and pay me And never do your chain no. The CP, I can't tell you, sir. I'm a man who is a great doctor. You're a doctor, you know. One family, and yes, sir. I'm a man who is a doctor. 